All right, perfect, let's begin. So in this review, we're gonna be going over formal charges and resonance structures, and we'll be going over a few example problems of what you might see on the test or in past tests, and also in past homework assignments. These topics can also be found in the sections 4.7 through 4.9 in the, in the textbook. Okay. So first in order to really understand the concepts of formal charges and resonance structures, we need to go over Lewis structures. So what a Lewis structure is, or it, it can also be known as a Lewis dot structure, electron dot structure, Lewis electron dot structures. They're, they're diagrams that show the bonding between atoms of a molecule, as well as the lone pairs of electrons that may exist in the molecule. So one example is over here to the right, we have a Lewis structure of a carbon atom. So in order to create a Lewis structure, you first take the elements or the element symbol, you put it in the center. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but you put it in the center and then you find the valence electrons. In the following slide, I'll show how we'll, we'll go over how to find valence electrons, but know that there are four um, positions around the element where you can put a valence electron. So you can first go in a circle, put them in those four positions, and then any leftover valence electrons, you can go back through and pair them up. And then for um, two elements, so for, for this example, we have CH4, meaning there are four hydrogen atoms and one carbon atom, you're going to find how many valence electrons in hydrogen. So hydrogen has one valence electron and carbon has four valence electrons. So since there are four hydrogen atoms, you're gonna have four valence electrons there. Since, since there's four of each, this can be a perfect pair. So you're gonna have this nice bond right, right around it. And then, yeah, blue structures are pretty simple. Let's, let's move on. All right, so to find valence electrons, this is also super easy. Valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell or energy level. And so there's gonna be uh, eight valence electrons possible. So you just look at the periodical table, you subtract this area right here, where you don't see any red dots, and you essentially just count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So say for example, you wanna know how many valence electrons boron has. You, look, you find boron on the periodical table. Here it is, it's a metalloid. And you count to that number. So one, two, three. Boron, boron has three valence electrons. And that works for any, any atom. Say you wanna find the, uh, amount of valence electrons uh, neon has, you count to where it is, it's eight, eight valence electrons. There's one exception of helium. helium. Helium has only two valence electrons. All right. So expanding the octet. Expanded octet refers to the Lewis structures where the central atom ends up with more than an octet, such as these following compounds, PCL5 or XEF4. One can easily see that if the central atom, P, is to be joined to five chlorine atoms, phosphor would have 10 electrons instead of the octet. Um, here's an example from the, um, really clarify that. Um, so which of the following molecules contains an atom with an expanded octet? So first, this can be really helpful to draw out the Lewis structures. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, so draw out the Lewis structures first, and that'll help you figure out which ones need to be um, needs to expand the octet. And then any element that is in the third period or below may expand its octet through the use of the d orbital. In these molecules, the atoms that may expand the octets are exon, 
gallium, chlorine, and um, selenium. And then the atoms, uh, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. Um, those atoms are, they strictly adhere to that octet rule. So in these, in these compounds that we have here, all of them will form charges of zero, except for um, this third one right here. This third one is going to have a negative formal charge on on the oxygen. So right there, you can you know it's not going to be an expanded octet. But also gallium that wouldn't have an um, extended octet because it's electron. Um, deficient right here. And also, it's pretty simple if you just follow the rule. Typically, all um, basically all atoms that are either gallium, selenium, or exon, they will most likely have an expanded octet unless they're electron deficient, like gallium is over here. Okay, here's another practice problem with expanding octets. Which of these highlighted elements in the figure expands its octet when bonding to a highly electronegative element? So we talked about this briefly in the last slide. The elements in the third period are um, yellow, red, and green. They will most always expand their octet. All right, let's go ahead and move on to formal charges. So formal charges help us keep track of the electrons in a molecule. The formal charge tells you whether an atom has more electrons, uh, negative charge or protons, positive charge associated with it. And um, upon looking at it, you can, you can note that the minus sign, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's a negative formal charge. And if it's a positive sign, it's a positive formal charge. Really straightforward. All right, let's do a practice problem. Can't see that. There we go. Okay. So, first off, We'll start with this first point. What are the correct formal charges for the atoms in structure A? Over here to the right, we can see the various structures. Um, for structure A, it's going to be sulfur equals zero, nitrogen equals one, and um, carbon carbon equals equals two. And uh, and then for structure B, sulfur is going to equal zero, nitrogen equals negative one, and carbon equals zero. What are the correct chromo charges on the atoms of structure C? Sulfur equals two, nitrogen equals negative one, and carbon equals negative two. And then based on, on, on the following formal charges above, which is the best structure? That's gonna be structure, structure B. Yeah, all right, now I'll go back through and explain these real quick. So over here to the right, these are um, thiocyanate, thiocyanate night, um, compounds. And uh, anyways, essentially, when C is the central atoms, the atoms all carry zero formal charge except for nitrogen, which has a negative formal charge. Since nitrogen is the most electronegative element, it is the preferred location for the negative charge. Um, so, um, so here in structure B, we can see carbon is a center, which means it will be a charge of zero. And 
and then these, um, and then which would make the nitrogen um, have a, ch a formal charge of negative one and uh, sulfur a formal charge of zero. Over here, it, since carbon are on the sides, it's either going to be negative two or two. Or two structure C is going to have a negative two charge, and structure A is going to have a positive two charge. And since uh, since it's an ion, it is not possible to have formal charges of zero on all the atoms since the total of all the formal charges must be negative one, the, which, which is indicated here on, off to the right. Resonance structures. Resonance structures is a way of describing bonding in certain molecules or ions by the combination of several contributing structures into a resonance hybrid and valence bond theory. The various options of how the Lewis structure, or sorry, essentially resonance structure is just a way of various options of how you can rearrange a Lewis structure. All right, let's do another practice problem with resonance form, resonance structures. So which resonance resonance forms of which resonance form structure of silicon dioxide contribute the most to the actual bonding? So in order to find the formal charge, you're first going to take the number of valence electrons, subtract that from the number of non-bonding electrons, subtracted by half the number of bonding electrons. So silicon begins with four valence electrons and oxygen begins with six valence electrons. So as we can see in structure A, and then also you're gonna repeat this process throughout all the structures, but with structure A, to keep this um, um, time friendly, we're just gonna do this one structure because we know it's the right answer, because I've already gone through it. <laughs> uh, so first you're gonna take the formal charge of silicon, which is four valence electrons minus zero non-bonding electrons minus 0.5 times bonding electrons equals, which is gonna equal zero. While, and while all, three, while all three structures have acceptable formal charges, only A has an ideal formal charge of zero for all three atoms. A contributes the most to the resonance, the resonance structure. So there are four, four points that all resonance structures have in common for features. They are the arrangement of atoms, the atoms present, I like the number of atoms, the net charge on the mole molecular ion, and the number of electrons. All right, so now we're gonna watch a quick video that really sums up and gives a really, really nice overview of everything we just went over. So in order uh, to help clarify everything, this is by Khan Academy. He does a really nice job of explaining everything. Okay. anion. So a nitrate anion has one nitrogen and three oxygens, and it has a negative charge. It has a negative charge. So pause this video and see if you can draw that, the Lewis structure for a nitrate anion. All right, well, we've done this many times. The first step is to just account for the valence electrons. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons in its outer shell, in that second shell, it's a neutral free nitrogen atom. So we have five valence electrons there. Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. If you have three oxygens, we're going to have six times three. And so if you just add up the valence electrons, if these were three neutral atoms, you would get five plus 18, which is 23 valence electrons. Now, the next thing we have to keep in mind is this is an anion. This has a negative one charge right over here. So it's going to have 
one more extra electron, one more extra valence electron than you would expect if these were just free atoms that were neutral. So let's add one valence electron here. So that gets us to 24 valence electrons. And then the next step is let's try to actually draw this structure. And the way we do it is we try to pick the least electronegative atom that is not hydrogen to be the central atom. In this case, it is nitrogen. It's to the left of oxygen in that second period. So let's put nitrogen in the center right there. And around it, let's put three oxygens. So one, two, three oxygens. Let's put a single bond between them. And so, so far, we, and let me do that in another color so we can count for it better. From the purple. So, so far, we have accounted for two, four, six valence electrons. So, minus six valence electrons gets us to 18 valence electrons. The next step is we would try to allocate as many of these as possible to our terminal atoms, the oxygens over here, try to get them to a full octet. So, let's do that. This, each of these oxygens, they're already participating in one of these covalent bonds, so they already have two valence electrons hanging out. So let's see if we can give them each another six to get to eight. So two, four, six, two, four, six, and then two, four, and six. And so just like that, we have allocated 18 valence electrons, six, 12, 18 minus 18 valence electrons, and we are now left with no further valence electrons to allocate. But let's see how our atoms are doing. We know the oxygens have a full octet, but the nitrogen only has two, four, six valence electrons hanging around. It would be great if there was a Lewis structure where we could have eight valence electrons for that nitrogen. Well, one way to do that is to take one of these lone pairs from one of the oxygens and turn that into another covalent bond. So let's do that. So let me just erase this pair right over here. And I'm just going to turn that into another covalent bond. And this is looking pretty good. We have eight valence electrons around each of the oxygens. And now we have eight for the nitrogen, two, four, six, eight. And we have to remind ourselves that this is an anion. It has a negative one charge. So to finish the Lewis diagram, we would just put that negative charge there. And this is all well and good. But if this was the only way that nitrate existed, when we observed nitrate anions in the world, we would expect to see one shorter bond and two longer bonds. And we would expect one of the bonds to have a different energy than the other two. But in the real world, we don't see that. We see that all of the bonds actually have the same length and they actually have the same energy. And so the interesting question is, why is that? And one thing that you might appreciate is, when I took that lone pair to create this covalent bond, I could have done it with that top oxygen, I could have done it with this bottom left oxygen, or I could have done it with that bottom right oxygen. And so there's actually three valid Lewis structures that we could have had. Not only could we have had this Lewis structure, we could have had this one. I'll draw it all in yellow to save us some time, where you have this nitrogen, has a single bond with that top oxygen, and so that top oxygen still has six electrons in lone pairs, and maybe it forms a double bond with the bottom left oxygen. So this bottom left oxygen only has two lone pairs. One of them would have gone to form the double bond, and then this oxygen would look the same. So what I am drawing here is another valid Lewis structure, or the double bond might have formed with this bottom right oxygen. So let me draw that. So another valid loose structure could look like this. So nitrogen, one of that oxygen has three lone pairs. This oxygen also has three lone pairs. And now this one has the double bond and only has two lone pairs. And whenever we see a situation where we have three valid Lewis structures, we call this resonance. Resonance. Resonance and we'll put an arrow, these two-way arrows, between these structures. And when you hear the word resonance, it sometimes conjures up this image that you're bouncing back, you're resonating between these structures, but that's actually not right. What the right way to think about it is, these different ways of visualizing the nitrate, these contribute to a resonance hybrid, which is really the true way that the nitrate exists. And so if we wanted to draw a resonance hybrid, it would look like this. You have the nitrogen in the center, you have your oxygens, one, two, three. 
I can draw our first covalent bond like that. And then you would show the bond between nitrogen and each of these oxygens are a hybrid between someplace between a single bond and a double bond. And so instead of just one of them having the double bond and the other two having single bonds, they're all somewhere in between. So maybe you draw a dotted line, something like that, to show what the reality is, is that you actually have three bonds that are someplace in between a single and a double bond because the electrons in this molecule are delocalized throughout. And of course, you wanna make sure, you always wanna make sure that people recognize that this is a anion. So this is the idea of resonance. You have multiple valid Lewis structures. They are all contribute to a resonance hybrid, which is actually what we observe. We're not just bouncing between these different structures. The actual observation will be a hybrid of the three. Now, what we just drew here, these three are all equivalent, but in certain cases, and we'll see this in future videos, you don't have equivalent structures, and some of them might contribute more to the resonance hybrid than others, but we'll see that in future videos. Okay, perfect. Well, I, I hope all of that made sense to you guys. I'm, I'm not the best explainer, so if anything didn't quite make sense, I'd encourage you to go back through um, smart work number 14 or watch some Khan Academy videos. He explains all of these concepts really well and he will occasionally give excellent practice problems. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you all do, do super good on the on the final.